the first, I don't know, 30 seconds of this video might be a little bit obnoxious. Possibly turn down the volume. <laughs> yes! <laughs> ah, so frigging cool, man. What the actual heck? The entire thing, from start to finish, it was 40 minutes of just the best Nintendo E3 event we have ever seen! Not only from Nintendo, but from anyone, ever! And I might be saying that just a tiny bit biased because I am a huge Nintendo fan, but I do want to say, if you can right now look me in the eyes and say the words, I was disappointed with Nintendo's E3 Direct, then I don't know if you can actually call yourself a Nintendo fan at this point, because that Direct was tailored, handmade for Nintendo fans of every variety. There was Mario, there was Animal Crossing, there was Luigi's Mansion, there was Zelda, there was everything, there was hardcore ports of games to the system, there was just so much. And two huge Smash Brother reveals, including Banjo-Kazooie. Like, I, Nintendo couldn't be listening to us any more than they are right now, and I love it, I love Nintendo, I love all of you, I love everything, let's just Freaking go! <sighs> I'm going to go through this entire event and just gush all over every single aspect about it. <laughs> and I want to start by saying that my predictions for this event was pretty much on point, but also well than more than exceeded. I predicted that they would have to talk about a lot of these games that we've been waiting to hear about, and they did. But I also said that I doubt we'd get any new announcements, and we were wrong. Looking at you, No More Heroes 3. But I do think it's funny now how close my April Fool's Fake Direct ended up being. We're getting Witcher 3 on the Switch. We're getting Breath of the Wild 2. What? <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry I made you wait for this video. I know it's been a few hours. I actually completely crashed after I live streamed. I was so freaking tired and I didn't want to do this while I was tired because clearly I needed the freaking energy for how amazing that event was. Oh, I feel drunk on Nintendo right now. Okay, it started with a bang. We got a Smash Brothers cinematic trailer that was really cool and then introduced us to some Dragon Quest characters, a whole lot of Dragon Quest characters. And I mean, that was fantastic. I would love to talk about it some more, but we just have so much stuff to cover. Let's breeze past it. And then they moved into the Dragon Quest game coming to Switch, which we saw in Square Enix's event, and we've been knowing about, but oh boy, if I ain't excited for it. I would love to say it's the RPG I'm most excited for on Switch, and even though it is up there right at the top, there is a ton coming right now, and we're gonna see a lot of them in this video right now. Then we had gameplay done right with a Luigi's Mansion breakdown of exactly how you play the game and all the new mechanics, and it just looks gorgeous. It looks like the best Luigi's Mansion game, way better than Dark Moon, and even better than the first one. One. Gorgeous. Like, it li it looks like it has all its- oh, man. It just has such personality, and it just stands out from any other Mario game and even the other Luigi's Mansion games. Then we got the weirdest announcement from the entire event, a uh, Dark Crystal Netflix game. I couldn't tell while watching it, like, is it another interactive game like Black Mirror Bandersnatch that you play on your TV on Netflix, and it's just, like, co-published by Nintendo, but then it kind of looked like it was on Switch, but then it also said Netflix, and Netflix isn't on Switch. So I'm really confused by all of this. I I knew I was excited for Link's Awakening because duh, it's Zelda, but I didn't realize how excited until it was thrown at my face during this event. You can even make your own dungeons now, so it has its own Zelda maker. So that was something else in my fake direct that I predicted, by the way. Was there anything in my fake direct I got wrong, I wonder? I might have to go back and watch it again. Speaking of those amazing RPGs, we can cross another one off the list with Trials of Mana. This game looks fantastic, and I can't wait. And then we're also finally getting that Secret of Mana triple pack to the Switch. I don't know if it's digital only, or if it's getting a physical release. I'm not too fussed, honestly. I can just import the Japanese physical release from Japan and then buy this digitally. I don't care at this point. I'll do that if I have to. Witcher 3 is coming to Switch, and while we did see gameplay, by the way, we saw gameplay for everything in this Direct. I don't want to sound like a broken record, so I'm just going to say it here and now. And we, of course, saw gameplay for this, and it did look a little rough around the edges. I was 
was wondering how are you going to put Witcher 3 on the Switch and it looks like it has taken a serious hit in the graphical department. However, it's on Switch. You can play the entire game on Switch, so no complaints from me. I am excited. We got another teaser for Fire Emblem since that one is so close, releasing next month. This is another one of those RPGs. Keep adding them. Keep that tally going, guys. I don't know how any of us are going to have enough time to play through all of these. I am really excited for this. I ordered the big bundle thing from GameStop. It's getting delivered straight to my door. I've forgotten what's in it, to be honest, but I am hype. Then, arguably, my favorite Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 5, is on the way to Switch, as well as 6, which is arguably my least favorite Resident Evil game. And I want to say, if you're new around here, I am more than aware that Res 5 isn't a Resident Evil game. I just find that game to be one of the best co-op games I've ever played, and I have great nostalgia playing it with one of my friends. Now, I was under the understanding that Travis Strikes Again was supposed to be a test as to whether or not they were going to bother making another No More Heroes game. They even mentioned that fact in Travis Strikes Again multiple times. Like, if that game was a success, they wouldn't make No More Heroes 3 for Switch. I guess they just didn't care and they went ahead and made it anyway because here it is. Probably the second biggest and most exciting new announcement of the entire event and that was, oh man. We got a new Contra game that does look pretty good as well as all the other Contra games including the Probotector games which were the European releases of Contra are in this like big pack now being released onto Switch like today. Then we got Panzer Dragoon out of nowhere as well as more hype for the Pokemon games. Tell me that Astral Chain doesn't look way too ambitious for the Switch. Like some of these areas that we're seeing and just the scope of the game gameplay, the detail, and the visuals, like this game doesn't look like it was made with the Switch in mind. It looks beautiful. The gameplay looks absolutely stunning. I love the way that you kind of use two characters in one and combine their attacks together and then merge them and they're all linked together by this astral chain. And the story sounds really interesting. Everything about this game, I can't believe that it's just almost here already. Like at some point Platinum Games were like, we're just gonna make this really awesome game for Switch, this completely brand new concept. It's gonna blow everyone's mind and we're gonna tell everyone about it and then just release it a few months later. Yeah, no biggie. It's gonna be great. Another look at Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, as well as a look at a bunch of new characters we haven't seen yet, like Ghost Rider and Elektra and a ton more, even someone that I didn't know. Cadence of Hyrule didn't exactly get the stealth drop that I was expecting. However, it only releases like two or three days from now. In fact, as soon as this event ended, well, I mean, I fell asleep, as I said, but when I woke up, I checked my phone and Nintendo had already emailed me asking me if I wanted a code. I said, yes. Yes, and now I'm waiting to hear back, so I might get to play this here pretty soon, but either way, we'll all get to play it very soon when it releases in like two days. And it still looks fantastic. I've already talked about this game a bunch. I won't waste any time on it here, but I am very, very excited. And it just looks like Link to the Past, but played to music, and oh my, oh my gosh. Nintendo, you're just again and again and again. <laughs> I was wondering if they do a new Mario and Sonic at the Olympics game, and they are. I've actually never played one, so I mean, here it is, I guess. <laughs> this next thing is the only thing that I will allow hardcore Nintendo fans to say they were disappointed in. It is the only level of disappointment I am accepting from this entire event. Anything else you can get out of my face with and I don't want to hear it, but the fact that Animal Crossing was pushed back until 2020, sure, I get that disappointment. We were told 2019 and we were looking forward to that and now we have to wait until next year, which feels very far away. It's only a few months into the next year so if they were planning for a late year release anyway it's it's still pretty close but at the same time okay yeah sure disappointing however we did get a look at the game and you can't tell me that was disappointing so it sort of leveled itself out i am so ready as a lot of you already know i haven't really played animal crossing before but i have been hyped to try out this one and i am so much more hyped now than i was before oh boy then we got a montage one heck of a montage i just want to say, i'm about to read out every single game that was shown in this montage and I want to say two things one every single one of these and there's like 20 had gameplay but also there were so many great games so many fantastic games and announcements in this one little montage alone that lasted about three minutes that if Nintendo had really extended out that montage and just made a 40 minute direct for these it still would have been better than every other event other than Square Enix's that's how good just this one montage was 
was, let alone the rest of Nintendo's event. By the way, there was like no talking in this event. It was just games, 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 games for 40 minutes. I couldn't catch my breath. After every exciting announcement, there was another one immediately after. I didn't have time to consume it. I didn't have time to accept what was happening to my body and my mind and my soul. Nintendo, please, just <sighs> calm down. Okay. <laughs> so this is what was in that montage. We had Spyro coming to Switch, Silk Song coming to Switch, no surprise there. Nino Kuni, that was leaked recently. Apparently it's getting a remaster of some kind and we're getting the normal version on Switch, but still very exciting. Minecraft Dungeons, which we got a look at during Microsoft's event. Blades, whatever. <laughs> My friend Pedro, that game releases pretty soon and looks really good. Doom Eternal we knew about, The Sinking City looks interesting, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Dead by Daylight, apparently that's coming to Switch, who knew? Another game that looks a little rough around the edges if you ask me, but still. Alien Isolation is actually a hidden gem and I'm looking forward to playing that on Switch. Crystal Chronicles we knew about, Dragon Quest Builders 2, I will always take more gameplay of that. Stranger Things 3, a beat em up in the Stranger Things universe I'm looking forward to. A a game we won't mention because Ubisoft still hasn't enabled my live streaming and I'm just so sick of this. But I will say that even Nintendo showed some actual gameplay of that game and not just a bunch of people prancing around on stage doing a chicken dance. Catan, Super Lucky's Tale, I guess Xbox is just giving up on the concept of exclusive. Dauntless actually looks interesting, I'm not sure what that is. And just a little reminder that a fantastic game called Super Mario Maker 2 is on the way to Switch pretty soon. And again, just that montage made dreams come true and it was just a very small portion of this. Now of course a montage in a Nintendo event means that we're pretty close to the end and we probably only have one or two things left. The next announcement was delivered in the exact same way that the King K. Rool announcement for Smash was delivered except this time King K. Rool was along for the ride. We all got trolled into thinking that Banjo might be coming to Smash but then it ended up actually being the Duck Hunt dog however then it actually ended up being Banjo in Smash. <laughs> this was just so cool because it, it's Nintendo listening. Now for me, I like Banjo just fine. I didn't really care one way or another if he did make it into Smash, but just the fact that everyone else wanted this so bad and Nintendo went, okay, we'll figure out how to make that happen and then made it happen. That in itself is a reason for me to lose my mind because I love Nintendo as a company. I'm so glad they were able to give all of you this moment and I was definitely along for that excitement hype. But then, ladies and gentlemen, in the spot that I expected to maybe see Bayonetta, or maybe see Metroid, they showed us something else, something different, something I would never have expected in a million years, even though I somewhat called it in my fake direct. Breath of the Wild. Freaking two. Oh, what? <laughs> what? 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 I. <laughs> Did Nintendo not only just win E3 this year, but win E3 every single year ever? Can we please go back? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This little trailer was so freaking hype. There's a lot going on here to unpack and I'm going to keep it pretty short because honestly it might be a whole video on its own. But just in case you're new around here, Zelda is my baby. I am uh, Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time tied with Ocarina so I've put a lot of thought into a potential Breath of the Wild sequel and I've said it before somewhere on my channel I have a lot of videos I can't remember where I have said before I would be very surprised if the next Zelda game wasn't either in the Breath of the Wild universe as a direct sequel or at the very least using the Breath of the Wild engine and I feel like it was pretty obvious as to why, and I mean, clearly they are doing it, but they built this entire engine from ground up. It took them, like, what, five years to make that game? And it was loved. Like, people loved this engine. They were like, yes, this is what Zelda should be. Thanks for reimagining it this way. So they're going to spend five years doing that and then just turn around and, what, make Wind Waker 2? No, that didn't really make much sense to me. So from the very start, the very launch of Breath of the Wild, I kind of always knew that that was what was going to happen, that it was going to be Breath of the Wild 2, or at least using that engine. However, now, the next thing I predicted, and I know I've said this somewhere, and again, I'm speculating and guessing based on that trailer, but I said, I bet you, 
it's darker. I bet you the same thing happens that happened back on the Nintendo 64 with Ocarina of Time. The next game, Majora's Mask, was so much darker. Ocarina of Time, pretty light, fun, friendly, exploration, explore the world of Hyrule, save the princess kind of game. But then the next game, Majora's Mask, it was dark, it was creepy, and it just had a different tone to it. And tell me that this little snippet of a trailer didn't look dark as heck. This weird creepy creature thing that did like a neck twist and an eye glow and, and Zelda and Link clearly looked freaked out. There was like a slow heartbeat in the background. The music and the tone was just ever so creepy. The Zelda castle seemed to get like messed up. Like this, this is this game is the Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time. It's the darker Breath of the Wild. It's Breath of the Wild 2, baby! <sighs> this makes a lot of sense and I'm really glad they did it. I don't know about all of you, but I wasn't ready to leave the Breath of the Wild Zelda universe behind. I really wanted to flesh that out more. Zelda didn't get nearly enough screen time and does look like in this game she's part of the adventure this time around. Her and Link have set off to be explorers. Maybe you even get to play as her. Maybe you get the option of picking between Link and Zelda. Or maybe you switch between the two of them throughout the adventure. I am honestly down for either of those scenarios. I will be surprised if we get it 2020. However, I am hoping. And that was Nintendo's event, and I'm sorry if you're sat there, seriously sat there going, oh, well, there was no F-Zero, so it sucked. I mean, there's always gonna be something that you're looking for, and maybe it's not there, but for the most part, if you're an overall Nintendo fan, then this was the direct for you, and there's no way you can be disappointed. Or maybe you're just an insert X game here fan that just happens to be made by Nintendo, but if you're actually a Nintendo fan, Oh, you just about lost your damn mind in this event, and I did too. It was really nice to finally get a bunch of release dates for things. Some things still need release dates, but for the most part, we know when things are coming now. There's pretty much a game a month from this point on, if not more. But I would love to know what you guys thought of that direct. Be honest, let me know down below. Thanks for waiting for this video. Thanks for watching this entire E3 with me. For everyone that hung out in the streams, everyone that waited for my video to come out after the stream and then watched that. It just thank Thank you. Thank you for the 600,000. Thank you for like the 6,000 another subs that we got on the channel today. It's been an insane E3 season. I might make a couple more videos like my favorite things at E3 and then we can start getting back into the game reviews. I have a ton of games I want to talk about that I finished recently that I played right before E3. Cadence of Hyrule is out pretty soon so we'll have to talk about that whenever I get my code from Nintendo. And I'm just I'm just gonna end this video before I run out of breath. Thank you so much for watching this. Smash like for the excitement, hair flip on that subscribe button if you love Nintendo, and double hair flip on the bell with notifications turned on. And if you found out during this event that you're not actually a Nintendo fan, that's fine. It's okay. We'll welcome you back at any time. <laughs> I love you all. I'm shaking with excitement. I'm gonna go make this video and then get some well-earned rest. Okay, bye.